2013. Uh, will the clerk please call the roll? Barbara Brenner? Here. Sam Crawford? Here. Kathy Kirshner? Here. Bill Knutson? Here. Pete Kremen? Here. Ken Mann? Here. Carl Weimer? Here. All right. Will you all please stand and join me in saluting the flag? All right, so um, a couple announcements. First, I'll remind everybody to please check and make sure your cell phone is turned off or on the silent mode. And also, I'll ask that since we've got a pretty full house tonight, that we keep the exits cleared. So if you want to come in and find a seat, there's lots of seats still down in the front middle here. Um, and then if you're handing any paperwork out to the council staff, please give a or to the council, please give a copy to our staff for the public record as well. So thank you. All right. Uh, from the Committee of the Whole, we had a strategy planning discussion and positions to be taken regarding collective bargaining per RCW 42.30.140, parentheses 4, parentheses A. We've got several sets of minutes to approve. Uh, Surface Water Work Session for September 17, 2013. The Regular County Council for September 24, 2013. Committee of the Whole for October 8, 2013. And the Regular County Council for October 8, 2013. I move approval. Okay. Council Member Knudsen moves approval. Are there any changes or additions to the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor of approval say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. That passes 7 to 0. We have no public hearings this evening, so we'll move right into open session. During open session, audience members will have up to three minutes to address the council on any issue relevant to county business. Before beginning to comment, please state your name and topic of interest for the record. If your last name is something other than Smith or Jones, please spell it for the clerk. Please make sure you speak right into the microphones at either podium. Please stand behind the signs and located in the aisles as a courtesy to other speakers. And thank you for your cooperation. So I'll go ahead and open open session, and we'll start with this side. Thank you. <clears throat> Lloyd Zimmerman, uh, Ferndale City Councilman, 2234 Main Street. I just wanted to come forward. It's been on my bucket list because I watch you on Channel 10 all the time, and I've known many of you for many years. And I just wanted to acknowledge the great stuff that you do that the time it takes away your family and <clears throat> I gave you a small little presentation of some handiwork that I did 24 years ago and tonight just seemed to be the right time to hopefully honor you with it. The, uh, the, uh, the concept here is about leadership and I can look in each one of your eyes and say that you, you love this county and you do your best to do the best for the people. You know, different sides of different issues, but I always feel that you're trying to work in our best interests. So, again, I really appreciate. Um, and, again, this will be the last meeting that you're all here together. The next meeting will be right around the same time as the election. So you're here as a team, and I still think that you're working on everyone's behalf. And I can only hope that in that time between the election and the first of the year, that something miraculous will happen and that you will continue to make a really strong mark for future generations here in Whatcom County. So again, I acknowledge you and I thank you for your service. Thank you, Lloyd. Thank you. Okay, hang on, guys. I, I think some councilors want to make comment. Councilmember Brenner, what what was the medium you used? That's scratch board. And oh, back in 1989, yeah. when I started doing that, remember the thousand points of light? Mm -hmm. You start with one dot on a black sheet, and it evolved from there. And uh, it's. It's, it sells Beautiful. a story to some people. It just doesn't really have a name, but it's about leadership. There's the aspect of intelligence, uh, emotional intuition, and then instinct. The wolf is up at the top there, and each and every one of you have been at the top of the pack by running, winning your various elections over the years. So, again, thank you very much. Thank you. And one more from Councilmember Knudsen. Well, I just want to say thank you. And I, um, I, I really, I, 
Is the tribal member, is that anybody in particular? No, it was the Southwest. I was, when I was living in Albuquerque, New Mexico, that was, there was, that was more the, the look. It's it. nobody you know, Bill. Yeah. Well, it's just, I, it, I, the face is very The names and chains have been protecting the innocents. There, well, it says Zimmerman on the bottom, so, you, you know, that was. And if you look on the vase, there's, it's a globe, yeah. and you'll mm -hmm. see North America, yeah. and there's an extra special dot right there in where Bellingham should be, so is that uh, I saw the North points American of light? One in South America below and, it. And Cocapelli yeah. is that uh, creature you know, who's trying to bring creativity and life to a community, which I think fits all you folks, try to, what you yep. try to do. It's so. beautiful. Thank you, Lloyd. Thank you very much. Thank you. What a great way to start our open session. All right, and then we'll go to the side. Come on up to the microphone. Uh, my name is Ross Marquart, and I would like to read to the council, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> some words that you uh, should all recognize. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution and laws of the state of Washington. This, of course, is the first part of the oath of office that each of you took. And for those of you on the council who have worked not to support but to undermine the application in this county of Washington law known as the Growth Management Act, you have wasted countless hours of council time, wasted countless hours of county staff time, wasted tens of thousands of dollars of taxpayer money working against this law, you members have clearly violated your oath of office multiple times. Knowing this, the only conscionable, honorable thing to do is to resign. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, next speaker, please. Uh, my name's Richard Califf. I live in Birch Bay Village, and I have a lot in Birch Bay Village that I want to put a manufactured home on. The lot was first drawn up in 1966, and at that time, I believe, from what I can figure out, there was a five-foot setback between the back of my lot and Birch Bay Drive. Uh, the county keeps telling me that it's now a 35-foot setback which cuts my lot to about 30 by a, about 30 percent and makes it unusable. Um, I would like the county council to kind of look into this because I don't believe it's it's just not fair. And also, I believe the lot is vested to have the five foot setback. And after I looked at the laws, and I'm no lawyer. I feel that I am vested, that my lot is vested to have a five-foot setback. All my neighbors' houses all are set up for five-foot setback. Um, I have some brochures here. Uh, Barbara has one, and Carl or Bill mm -hmm. has one. And um, I got I could give each one of you a packet here that kind of got the basics of the law and a drawing of where my house would be, and a, a Google Earth picture showing where all my neighbors' houses are almost cut in half by the 35-foot setback, indicating that there sure as heck wasn't one back when the village was incorporated. And the county told me that, or the planning bureau said, yes, we'll give you your permit, but you must file for a variance to get it. And it, it just feels like it's a bribe, $2,100 for the filing fee, about another $900 to do the paperwork, the drawings and everything, and send out the certified letters. And it, that just feels like a bribe to me. And so I feel it's unfair, and I would like to see if the council could kind of look into it. I would very much appreciate it. Would anybody like a, one of my little packets to kind of give you some Yes, you can pass, pa put them up here and we'll pass them down. Okay. Councilmember Brenner has a quick question. Yeah. I just wanted to point out, Mark Personius, could you raise your hand so he, you might want to talk to him because he is the, you know, you're the planning, long-range long -range planning. planning manager. 
Yes, and I think he would be very helpful in at least getting people connected. And I'm going to come in with him later in the week. Okay. Uh, it, it, yeah, it just, just, just seems... Uh, you might want to give him a packet. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next speaker, please. Greg Brown, Whatcom County. I don't think you guys need to resign. Oh, oh. Um, can I ask that? Um, yeah, he's taking care of it. That's all right. All right. He'll figure it out. Uh, Amy, twenty thirteen. 332 EDI money and multiple family home construction. You should have heard your conversation today. Started out with no connection between EDI funding and financing home development. Moved to let's include rentals and then do what we what do we do at the end of the 20 year payback? The vote ended up two to one. Approval. What happened to the no nexus at the beginning between EDI and the financing of homes? We fight all the time where our EDI money goes. I agree with Council Cro Councilman Crawford's no vote. I believe the EDI money is for infrastructure for public utilities and other projects that benefit the whole community. Some argue that this would provide jobs. There we go again, having public money being spent by our government to provide jobs for a few for a short period. Why not look at reducing some of the regulation and penalties to the private sector who can provide these homes? Please do not move ahead to modify the CDI guidelines. My next comment is the contract between the flood zone and Puget Sound Partnership. Excuse I commented me. today. Excuse me, Madam Chair, could you ask them to take their conversation out? I'm having yeah. a hard time hearing. I'm sorry. I was going to let Greg finish. Um, Mark and um, Rick. Rick, can you take your conversation out into the foyer so everyone can hear the speaker? I Thank you. <laughs> no, Thank I'll, you. I'll, Thank you, Councilmember Crawford. I'll finish quickly. Uh, I pointed out today that free money through the Puget Sound Partnerships comes with strings attached to the minimum. The county staff spokesperson spoke, told us how many agencies would be represented on this SWIFT group, and then proceeded to tell us how the Puget Sound Partnership wanted things to proceed. Provide money and sit at the table. I did not hear her name any direct public representation on this list. Some of the committee point out that this levy work is something that the county needs to do anyway. So why not, so why not use others' money? When will we start to pay for our own way and then be able to control the methods and means? Please vote no to authorize this contract. Please let our county and our local representatives be in charge without necessary bought and paid for influence. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak in open session? All right, seeing none, I'll close the open session and we'll move into our uh, Finance and Administrative Services Committee, Council Member Mann. Thank you, Madam Chair. In our committee today, we had seven items on the consent agenda. All seven items passed with a 3-0 recommendation for approval. I move approval of the consent agenda. Any discussion on the consent agenda items? All right, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that passes 7 0. Continuing on with the Finance Committee uh, under other items, the first one was an ordinance amending the Whatcom County budget, the 12th request in the amount of $1,488,730. This had a 3 0 recommendation for approval in committee, and I move approval, and I just want to point out that $600,000 of this money is to go towards medical expenses for two suspects during a, a pursuit and an apprehension, and that money will be reimbursed to us uh, by a different entity down the road. All right. Councilmember Brenner. Um, I'm going to speak against the budget request for two, uh, two numbers two and uh, number four. The part to appropriate 300000 to fund EDI grant for West Bakerview overpass project. Um, if, if it's already been done, there's no reason for us to pay for it after the fact. I, we get told this a lot. I, you know, we were told that, that the overpass improvements would improve the overpass. 
not only is it not improving the overpass presently, and it's about done, but as these overpass improvements were proceeding, the hotels were being built, the other things were being done, and this doesn't even take into account any potential future huge place that might locate there. So I think when they get done with this, and I said my example this morning was if I take my car to a mechanic and it comes back in the same or worse condition, should I have to pay the mechanic? And I don't think so if the mechanic tells me ahead of time it's going to improve it. So, and I'm not picking on mechanics. I thank God we have mechanics. So it's not that. It was just the first thing that came to my mind today. The other one was number four, to appropriate 400000 to um, to fund inventory purchase of road oil. The main reason for the road oil is all the chip seal that the county does. And I said this morning, I'm not an expert, but I have spoken to experts about this. The county, I believe, is using chip seal way too often in areas that don't need it. And this isn't the first time I've spoken against so much of the chip seal that we're doing. But we did have a former member on the county council who was a, an, an employee of the State Department of Transportation. When he retired, he managed a gravel pit. And he was pretty much an expert, plus I've talked to other people in the business. Um, who don't, you know, who think it, sometimes it doesn't look like there's a good reason why we're putting chip seal in certain places. Um, since we don't have any right to say where the chip seal goes once it's all approved, this is the only bite we get at this, so um, I can't support it. Okay, I just want to make sure, Councilmember Roman, did you move this for approval? Yep. Okay. I, I Councilmember Roman? Yeah, I just want to address the items. Uh, we, we discussed Ms. Brenner's concerns in uh, committee today. The 300,000, the mechanic analogy isn't very, doesn't work for me. I don't think it's very accurate. Basically, this is a commitment that we entered into with other entities and the work has been performed. This is our debt and we have to pay it. And uh, that's why I, I will support that. And the 400000 for the chip seal, I, I don't like chip seal any more than you do, and I'm looking forward to the expert presentation that you're going to schedule on your committee. As of now, this, this 400000 is as much about some of the other uh, cities that we subcontract or we are the purchasing agent for, basically, so we can buy in bulk and save money. So, again... You know, I, I understand your, your hostility towards chip seal, but I'm not sure this is the appropriate way to to hold that up. But I am looking forward to the presentation. Okay. Any other discussion on this item? All right. Will the clerk please call the roll? Barbara Brenner? No. Sam Crawford? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Bill Knutson? Yes. Pete Kremen? Yes. Ken Mann? Yes. Carl Weimer? Yes. Okay, that passes six to one with Council Member Brenner opposed. Item, item number two, oh, sorry. No, nope, you're good. Uh, item number two is a resolution amending the 2013 Whatcom County Flood Control Zone District budget, the fourth request in the amount of $8,000. We held this one in committee because we want our staff to connect with, um, with the joint board and see if they can take on some of the burden of this cost. It's not a huge cost, but it is a... Uh, it's an important message that we believe they should be supporting the, the planning unit. So we held that in committee, and I don't think that requires a vote. I just wanted to explain to folks why why I skipped over it, and it's on your agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, Councilmember Brenner? Yeah, yeah, and it was held. Um, my concern is is different. This was what happened in the plan, the uh, joint board. Um, I think before. We even had this planning unit thing completely together. So it does create an, an impression that the joint board has disdain for the planning unit. I don't think that's helpful. But also, um, I did request uh, Chris Bruski from Public Works uh, to come back to us with a list of how much money is being spent on staff time to service the joint board. This is very a very small amount. Um, and the fact that they cut it back by, what, a quarter or more, a third, 
before it even started seems it seems like they're treating themselves and the joint board very differently than they're treating the planning unit. I think both of those organizations are valid and they should get equal respect. All right, item number three, Councilmember Mann. Thank you, Madam Chair. Item number three is a resolution approving a salary schedule and policies for unrepresented Whatcom County employees effective January 1st, 2014. We recommended this three to zero in committee and I move approval. All right, is there any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes 7-0. Item number four is authorization for the county executive to enter into a contract between the county flood control zone district and the Puget Sound Partnership to develop a system-wide improvement framework to address deficiencies identified for the Nooksack River levees by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in the amount of $300,000. This will be as the council, uh, the council will be acting as the Whatcom County Flood Control District Board of Supervisors, we recommended this three to zero in committee. I move approval to the board. All right, Council Member Brenner. Well, I, sh I hope I'm not the only one speaking to this. Um, I'm going to support this because while I agree with um, Greg Brown's concerns, to me, I see this as a starting place. And it doesn't mean that we, at the end of this part, have to do anything except take the information and process it in our own process. This is a start. Uh, maybe, maybe the concerns will be for naught and everything will turn out fine and we'll get very objective information. I'm, let's see, I hope, but I don't know that that will necessarily happen. But I do know it's a starting point and um, I don't mind spending their money on a starting point. Okay, well, I'll just speak to this. I'm going to support this. And the reason is because we have a situation where our levees that protect the rest of the county from flooding, um, we've spent a lot of money building them up. And in the Pacific Northwest, there's evidence that having trees on levees can be beneficial to holding the levee. And the Army Corps of Engineers nationally came out with a standard that said we will not provide insurance if, or we won't insure these levees if they have vegetation growing on them, which makes it very difficult in Whatcom County because we found that having vegetation, vegetated levees is beneficial. So this money is money that will go towards working out a solution to that so that we can keep our levees vegetated if necessary and beneficial and also still remain in the FEMA um, flood um, program. So that's why I'm supporting that. Any other comments? All right. So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that passes seven to zero. Uh, number five. Number five is dis um, Discussion and possible action on the Economic Development Investment Program, the EDI board recommendation to modify guidelines to add single and multifamily home construction as an allowable use. We talked about this quite a bit in committee, and we did move approval, or we did recommend approval two to one of the policy change, and we, we just made it very clear to the executive that we want a thorough review of the interlocal agreement. We have some concerns about the details, um, and we laid those out today, and we discussed them at length. So I, I move approval. Councilmember Brenner. Um, well, I went back and forth in committee. Since then, I read that letter from John Harmon, which was actually a letter from David Stahlheim representing the city, and. I got to say, I, these were not not the issues we brought up, but there's three, or three issues here, I think, that are also extremely valid issues of concern and that there's not support for it the way it is. I remember when I read it about the 80% of the median income, and I thought, whoa, that's affordable housing for people who need subsidies? And I was kind of shocked. And... But I thought, you know, maybe it's just me. And then um, it, it does 
Uh, yeah, he, they include that as one of their concerns, that they talk about doing it for 60%, not 80%. 60% maybe, but that's even a little high, but maybe. But um, this, we have to remember one thing. This, the, um, the associated costs of the permits and all that still comes out of the taxpayers. Um, you know, that's out of all our pockets. And this seems a little broad for affordable housing to me. Um, so... I'm not comfortable with it the way it is, and I hear what you said, that they need to come back to it. I think we should make a little more, I'd like to hold it. I think we should make a little more of an effort to put some parameters in this that goes into their discussion. That's what I would like. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and the one that I brought up in committee was, I have a real problem with us just saying, okay, good idea, and then we don't have any say-so in where the housing goes, how much, whatever, whether it's appropriate, um, or is it just in the benefit of the person applying for it. And that scares me. Rather, I want people who need this and who, that would help them be the people who benefit, not the people who are making the application. And I feel we got burned pretty bad on an application, on another thing, and, and so I'm really nervous about this one. So are you making a motion to hold this okay. or move it into a different committee? Oh, or public works. Okay. <laughs> I move to hold this and move it into public works. Is that the right motion, Dana? Uh, Councilmember Brenner wants to hold action on this item and tonight move it into public and move works. it into public works for sure, discussion. Okay. Okay, and we vote on that now. All right. Do you want to make that no. motion before Councilmember Crawford has an opportunity? Madam Chair. Councilmember Kremen. Uh, I agree with Councilmember Brenner that we, we should hold this. I think there needs to be more work done on it, uh, more scrutiny. And we did get a significant amount of, of input just within the last 24 hours. So I think it's prudent and appropriate to hold this. But I do, I fail to see the correlation with this issue and public works, uh, other than the three people that sit on that particular committee, including myself, are <laughs> extremely concerned about this issue. But I think it's more, you know, we're talking about EDI funds. I think it's more appropriate for it to be in finance. Uh, and it would also uh, give, you know, finance is generally more well attended than, and there's usually more staff present as well. So I think. Uh, I'm going to amend it, my motion I, to, to holding committee and have an, another discussion in finance. I'm, I, I, just, I, I would love to host this discussion in finance. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Brenner. I, that's very, very generous of you. I, All right. So I believe we have to vote on this before taking any discussion or any more discussion. So the motion is to hold this and um, uh, bring it up for discussion in the Finance Committee. Is there a date or a time or do we want to be specific? No. Okay. It'll be worked out between the clerk and the Finance Committee chair? That's fine. Okay. All right. So all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that passes 7-0. That's it for Thank me. you, Councilmember Brenner and Councilmember Mann. All right, uh, moving on to, uh, we've got an item from Public Works Health and Safety Committee. Councilmember Brenner. We discussed the resolution approving the Columbia Valley Water District 2013 Water System Comprehensive Plan update, and it received approval from everybody, including the Health Department. So the recommendation was 3-0 to recommend approval to the County Council, and I so move. All right. Is there any further discussion on that item? All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes 7-0. Item number 7, Councilmember Brenner. Um, this was the resolution to consider vacating a portion of Glendale Drive per 
state law and Whatcom County Code. And um, what this would, I know, I don't want to go into all the detail. Um, this would start the process to allow the uh, public works staff to bring forward uh, a study and recommendation to the council. And um, I think it was, yeah, it was a three to zero vote to move ahead with two that. One. What? Two one. Two, I voted against it. No, he oh, voted he against it. Okay. <laughs> I didn't vote against it. Okay, two to one to do this. Um, that doesn't mean I support it in the end. It just means I don't mind getting the information. Um, the people went through the process. They're supposed to go through to get this moved to this point, and I'm okay with that. My only concern, and I brought it up, and um, Joe Rutan was here for Public Works. He didn't have the answer, and that was if we vacate a county right-of-way, can we still retain the ability to put in a stormwater facility in that vacated right-of-way if we need it in the future? That's my big concern. Um, we're giving up all these rights-of-way, which include for stormwater uh, facilities, and we're getting hit harder and harder by the state and feds about doing stormwater facilities, and we need to have these areas. So. I'm not sure what the answer to that is, so I'd like to at least wait for that. So there you have it. We recommend it two to one to approve this. So you're making a motion to approve or making a, po a motion to wait? Making a motion to approve to let them bring forward all the information. Okay. Council Member Mann. So uh, I'm not committed to, to my no vote. I just kind of wanted to comment on it and see what you maybe, – maybe I'm wrong, you know. Um, it, I thought from our discussion today, we learned that most of what a, this, um, the citizens expressed an interest in doing on this property, they could already do on the property without going through the vacation process, and that we could maybe save them some time and the county some time and, and staff time and, and maybe even save these folks the $800 application fee. Um, by just telling them, look, you can already garden on that piece of property. You can already have, a, you know, a non-attached structure there. Uh, so that was my understanding of what Joe said today. But may maybe I misunderstood. Councilman Brenner. Well, that was sort of half of what was said. But the the bottom line is, if they wanted to put anything permanently there, they can't do that. They can put temporary things in that area. Um, I thought it was interesting that they were talking about how it's in such bad shape and, and, and it needs cleaning up and all that. They can do that right now. A right-of-way is not ownership. It's an easement over the property that's already owned by those people. So they can, if they're worried about that, they can do that. Um, that's what, you know, I don't know that that's their, maybe they want to do something permanent there. My question is, if they do something permanent there, how do we end up being able to do a stormwater facility in the future if there's something permanent Yeah, that's there? a great question. So, yeah, and Joe couldn't answer it. So, I'm, you know, I'd go either way on this. If we want to hold it, I can do that. Or if we want to move ahead. They said they prefer we move ahead so they can bring us all the information we need. Councilmember Crawford. Yeah, and, and you don't, I don't know, I apologize that I wasn't at the meeting today, but you don't do this for gardening purposes. This is this is a significant uh, thing. I That said, on the face of it, based on what I see, I support it. It's, I assume it's meeting uh, right in the middle between the two neighbors. Yeah, that's usually the way these are done. And uh, there will never be a road there. I, you know, in terms of the stormwater issue, uh, that should be part of public works analysis that they'll bring forward. But the people have paid the fee. They want the land. We're obviously, or at least it's obvious to me, never going to have a road there. So let's let the process carry through. I, I fully support letting the public works department go ahead with this. So they've already paid the fee? Yes, they paid $790. Okay, so they don't get that money back if we don't do the investigation? I don't know. No, actually, you get a portion. Um, I did this once where there was a portion that was refunded. Um, we don't, don't have anybody Frank here. Yeah, you get a portion back uh, because they, they, without doing the research, they haven't spent all the money, but they won't get all of it back. Oh, at this okay. Point. I thought they would get the seven hundred ninety dollars back. Okay. Councilmember Brenner. Well, I just want to make it very clear. 
a right-of-way vacation mm -hmm. isn't just about roads. It's about using it for county purposes, which would include stormwater facilities. So whether or not there'd ever be a road there doesn't change my concern about whether we might want a stormwater facility there. And we won't know that until we get information about the flow and, and right. you know, what's in that area. So Should you're supporting it, right? I'm supporting moving forward. Good, okay. Okay. Anybody else have a comment? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that moves forward seven to zero. It passes seven to zero. And other items, we have one item from the Planning and Development Committee, Councilmember Knudsen. Yes, we had an ordinance amending Whatcom County Code Title 20 zoning to correct errors and provide clarification. Um, it passed with a 3-0 recommendation and I move approval. All right, Councilmember Crawford. Uh, being one of the council representatives on this committee uh, who attended more than one meeting, I think it was, Mr. Mann. Uh, oh, I attended one. This was, yeah, this was, it was, I'm sure Mr. Mann will agree with all of his participation in this, that this was a difficult process uh, because we were walking a tightrope between trying to do some what were hopefully practical changes and not doing things that really substantially changed uh, the outcome necessarily based on the what was trying to be achieved through our land use regulations, but simply to make them, well, to make them simpler. And uh, it's difficult because our layered regulations uh, uh, don't allow for much simplification. So I, I think what has what we have managed to accomplish in this group is good, uh, but it's a lot of work. And to me, in the end, it kind of shows how difficult and challenging it is to deal with Title 20 overall, which was the reason why this was started. Uh, but uh, here you have it. I, I encourage you to support it. And uh, any additional efforts that the executive wants to put forward, uh, because he is the one that initiated this, uh, to try to make uh, these regulations a little easier, uh, I'm all ears. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for your work on that. I know it was a long process. Any other discussion on that item? The other per oh, I have one more. Crawford? The other person is Gary Davis. Uh, you know, he mm -hmm. he's easy. He, he is constantly the subject of accolades because uh, he's a good guy and he does good work. And and this is another example where he took a very challenging thing. I don't really understand how Gary can spend the amount of time he does uh, to do this because the amount of work he was accomplishing between meetings was pretty phenomenal, uh, going through a very difficult process. So. Uh, I, I think we would be remiss without acknowledging his hard work on this and, and his uh, somehow his, the way he manages to get these kinds of projects done is pretty tremendous. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Brenner? And the Planning Commission. They worked on it too, so, and they brought it forward with a recommendation. There was a lot of involvement by a lot of different a lot of A lot of eyeballs looked at this. Yes. Yes. All right. Seeing no further comments, will the clerk please call the roll? Barbara Brenner? Yes. Sam Crawford? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Bill Knudsen? Yes. Pete Kremen? Yes. Ken Mann? Yes. Carl Weimer? Yes. All right, that passes 7-0. And we have one more item. It's nomination and appointment of one council member to serve as the Wasac Legislative Steering Committee designee for 2014. What's and I, I will nominate Councilmember Kremen to continue serving in that oh, capacity because I believe he's doing a fabulous job. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Councilmember Crawford? I'll, I'll bring it up in our other business. All right. All right. So all those in favor of Councilmember Kremen, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thanks, Councilmember Kremen. And then we've got resolution establishing regular Whatcom County Council meeting dates for 2014. I'll move approval. Here we go. Councilmember Crawford moves approval. Councilmember Brenner wants them every week. Okay, let's vote. No. <laughs> well, I either uh, want them every Brenner. week or every first and third or every second and fourth. Right now, it is like it's always been this way since we went to this schedule. Um, it's every other week except when it's not. I don't think that's in the public interest because <laughs> when we don't even know sometimes when our meetings are, it's not very fair to expect that the public can know. And 
And this wouldn't be as easy for me either, but I think it's, I just think it's a better schedule to allow for the most public input. And so my motion, first I'll try, uh, I move that we meet every week, every Tuesday, which we used to do. Madam Chair, there's already a motion on the floor. Well, doesn't my amendment supersede that? You're moving to amend? I'm moving to amend, Okay, yes. so you've got a, a motion to amend that the council meets every week. All right, seeing no discussion on that item, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 I voted right. twice accidentally. I, was, I, I meant to vote. No. All right, let's vote well, again. This is the most I ever got. This is good. <laughs> I don't know who voted which way. That is who said I? Bill. Madam you. Chair. Who meant to say I? I you know, Come on. Okay, wait a second. I, I, I apologize, but I was expecting Council Member Brenner to say something that she says every year, and I think what I heard. Your motion your, your, was not was I, what I was expecting. It's to meet 52 times. Do you want to meet every year, every week? Except for holidays. Except for well, holidays. Well, except for holidays in August, you know, the, the same holidays, but every week except for those times. Okay. Yeah. Thank you Sorry, for clarifying that. that. Yeah. I thought you wanted, usually it's every, you, you want to have it on the, First and third. So that First was and third. Those so that's what I was. Expecting. Okay. So back to the vote. We're going to take the vote again. So everybody's clear on the motion. Council Member Brenner wants to meet every week except for holidays. Yes. All right. So all in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Okay. That yeah. fails. Yeah. One you know, to six. I it was every week. <laughs> okay. I thought I was making progress. Okay. Council Member Brenner. All right. I will, just so I don't give, take up all this time, I move that we meet every first and third Tuesday or every second and fourth Tuesday except for holidays. And you guys can work that out after it. I just don't want to do three motions. So your motion is to set a regular schedule. Yes, that kind of regular. Not regular like this is. It says resolution establishing regular meeting days, but... So just so the public knows, let's talk a little bit about that. The schedule gets set up, and, and um, I'm going to ask our clerk, when you put this schedule together, what kind of things do you have to consider? I have my little list here. Okay. Um, try not to have a meeting after a holiday Monday so that the office is not closed so pe people want to come in and look at files or whatever they're, the day before a council meeting. Um, they can still do that if I don't have it scheduled right after a holiday. Um, starting off the year after the oath of office ceremony, which is set up in the charter, so we it's the first Tuesday after the second Monday in January, so we start the year off then. Um, NACO conference in March, don't meet on election day, and try not to meet the 4th of July week. So those are the things we look at. And every the charter. Year. And anything that's in the charter, correct. And the charter says... We have to meet 22 times a year. 22 times a year. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Councilmember Brenner. Well, charter, you, I mean, it allowed us to meet every week, except, well, almost every week, almost every, except when there was holidays and things like that. We did. We met every Tuesday. When I first started working for the council office in 1991, we met the first, second, and fourth Tuesdays of the month, so we've never met. Well, okay. Since I've been here, we've I never met every okay. Tuesday. That'll be my motion. First, second, and fourth Tuesday of the month. How's that? So you're not going to move the last one? Nope. I'll do that. So you're yeah. removing the last one and moving first, second, fourth Tuesday, Tuesday of, of every month. month. I like that better. And so I'll just remind you that we do meet practically every week because on the alternate weeks we have surface water work session oh. and we have the Board of Health. We have those during the day when people are working. We don't have evening meetings, and I just think it's good public policy to have Lots you know, of meetings, n more meetings, and have them on when people can say, "Is this the sec first, second, or fourth?" Rather than, let's see, is this the other Tuesday except when we're not going to meet on? So yeah, I think it's very confusing. 
for us, so it's confusing for the public. I've heard council members say, do we have a meeting next week? So. Okay. All those in favor of council member Brenner's motion to hold meetings on the first, second, and fourth Tuesdays of the month, say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Okay, that fails six to one. Council member Brenner is in favor. All right, I won't give any more pain. I'm just going to vote no. Okay, so we have a motion to, do we have a motion to accept the um, dates that were in our packet? Yeah, okay, Councilmember Crawford moved it. All right, any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, that passes six to one with Councilmember Brenner opposed. We are on our introduction items. We've got uh, items one through six. There were no changes to that, I believe. So is there a motion to accept the introduction items, one through six? Councilmember Mann moves to accept the items. Is there any discussion on this? Did you note the substitute on oh, that first and item? noting the substitute for item number one is the um, blue pages that we got. Uh, updated 2014 ACP with add-in line 11 from the committee discussion this afternoon. And that's regarding the resolution adopting the Whatcom County 2014 annual road construction program. Oh. All right. All those in favor of uh, accepting these items say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. That passes 7 to 0. And other business, council members with other business, council member Brenner. Yeah, we also in public works had a discussion of the annual construction program for 2014. And I'm not sure why it's not on our agenda too. Um, some things just come through public works committee and don't have to come to the council, but I thought. It's, oh, we just approved it to, for two weeks. Right. What? We just approved it to be introduced for two weeks. Okay, we approved it, but I wanted to make you aware there was a change that we made, and it was number uh, nine. Is that line eleven? Line eleven. Yeah, that's what we just we just went over that, and we approved that uh, changed and uh, approved I was to talking, introduce it. Sorry. Oh, okay. So we're good. You're good, Councilmember Crawford. Well, I was just going to say something uh, when we nominated and voted for Councilmember Crimmin to be the... Uh, oh, the introduction items, that's why. Gotcha. You didn't vote? Oh, oh, you did vote. You're talking about something else. I was going to say, and then I said <laughs> I would say it under other business, that I think, you know, it's been, uh, with all due respect to Councilmember Kirshner, who did represent us at, at, you know, to some degree, or to One a year. full degree, yeah, and did a good job of it. Um, but uh, I just find my colleague, Councilmember Crimmin, to be just really the right person in the right place at the right time, both here at the council and also from what I know of his personal life, to, to be able to spend the time and to do uh, a yeoman's job on behalf of the Whatcom County Council in that role. And uh, it is my hope that as we look at, uh, you know, things such as uh, accommodating uh, expense reimbursement and that sort of thing going into 2014, that as much as Councilmember Crimmin uh, is able to pursue that both with the state and with the National Association of Counties, I, I just wanted to voice my support for that. Good, and I, I would second that. I would support that as well. So something we need to look at. Councilmember Brenner. Um, and I apologize. I was talking to Councilmember Kremen, and I didn't hear what you had said. When you said the amended version, did you say what it was? I sure did. Okay. That's all I wanted to know. I said it was under the blue, what you're looking at right there. Right, but did you mention the change we made? No. Did you want to mention it? Yeah, that okay. was the whole purpose of All what right. I was saying. Um, it, had, it, it had said it was the Slater Road, Northwest Road intersection. Um, and what we, what we felt in committee was that you don't want to make those improvements at that intersection without knowing if we're going to have a four-way deal or a three-way deal and um, so that it's really important that we get started on the Slater Road connector 
evaluation to make that determination so that we don't do something now and then have to do something again in a few years if we – it was the cart before – it seemed like it was in the wrong sequence, so we, we changed it to do the connector issue itself before we determined what we're going to do about that intersection. Okay. Thank you. Any other business? All right. Are there reports from, or other items from council members? Council Member Weimer, Knudsen, Mann. I have nothing to report. Have a safe and happy Halloween, Council Member Brenner. <laughs> Just one thing. I did attend the um, planning unit meeting, and it was very differently done this time than the other time. And as Council Member Kremen said, I think it was because some of us did make comments about it before. And I felt the facilitators this time did a very good job of keeping it on pretty much on track and um, – I thought it was well done, and I was the biggest complainer about the first meeting, so Council one of the biggest. Councilmember Kremen. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the only thing I had to report is that uh, about a week or so ago, the uh, Association of, of Counties for Washington State held a meeting dealing with exempt wells, um, and uh, we, we actually have someone here in in the audience who actually drove down to the meeting. It was not just uh, members representing the various counties of the state. There were <clears throat> uh, representatives from the tribes. There were representatives from the Department of Ecology, etc. It, it was a robust discussion. It was a at least two-hour meeting. Uh, I attended by conference call uh, and as, as Council Member Crawford uh, pointed out, it you know we, we have a limited budget, and uh, uh, it, I think I would be able to be more effective by being there in person. Although I uh, maybe uh, Mr. Brown can can verify this, that I did speak my mind and was pretty uh, firm in. Uh, my belief that the, the counties of this state are are under siege, and uh, this is a, an issue that is very important to every county in Washington State, and thousands, literally thousands of of uh, landowners. And uh, I'm going to stay on top of this issue. Uh, we have another meeting coming up in uh, the not too distant future, and it's going to be a high priority for the association. And in fact, uh, Chair Kirshner can uh, also verify that just today, uh, uh, Councilmember Kirshner and I had a meeting with the executive talking about legislative priorities. Uh, for the upcoming year, and the, two of the high priority issues, one of the two, uh, happens to be exempt wells. And so um, I'm committed to uh, representing the county as best I can uh, in a robust way and a very active way, and um, hopefully we'll be able to uh, prevail and uh, protect property rights for thousands of citizens, and uh, so I just wanted to let you know that that meeting was well attended. There was a long and robust discussion. Nothing was resolved, uh, but I think there's going to be uh, a lot of, it's going to be a very major issue in the upcoming session, and I just would like to let you know that I am ready, willing, and able to uh, to do the best I can to represent Whatcom County and its citizens regarding that issue. Thank you, Councilmember Kremen. Any other business? I don't or have. Any other yeah, I don't have a report, but I do. <laughs> I forgot on other business, and I see our auditor is here, and I just wanted to ask you a question, if if you wouldn't mind. 
Uh, I got a call today from someone who said they did not get their ballot yet. And since uh, we're, uh, you guys haven't gotten yours, so since we're, didn't they mail out like Friday or something? They they were dropped uh, from the um, you know mailer on Friday, uh, but now all of the mail has to go through Seattle rather than Everett. Oh, so it takes longer. Now. So it's a little bit longer. I got mine finally today. I was I checking today. each day. Um, and I know a number of the rural county areas of people I talked to today had gotten theirs yesterday. So I'm guessing that everybody should have them tomorrow. Um, but I certainly will be giving the feedback to the post office what I think of their delivery now. Okay, so you're aware yeah. that it's going out slower than, than right. usual because usually oh, it was like the next day. Or yeah, two usually days. when it goes on Friday, we would drop it in Everett. Uh, it would be some of the people would get it Saturday, and the rest of us got it Monday. Right. Yeah. And and even into the first part of this year on our special elections, that was the case. Okay. But um, so for some reason, this one is yeah. not going there, and we'll be talking to them. Okay, thank you. I don't have anything else. Okay. Madam Chair. Councilmember Kremen. Thank you. I, I appreciate your indulgence, but, uh, you know, this is uh, televised, and, and a lot of our citizens get an opportunity to uh, uh, see the council in action. And I just want to uh, uh, give a, uh, a reminder that uh, I, mean, I, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news or something negative, but uh, October 31st is approaching, and this is the last meeting we have before October 31st, and that's when our second half uh, property taxes are due, and, isn't it? Yes. And, uh, and I just want to make sure that some people – including myself, sometimes forget uh, that you know, we have to get those property taxes in. And I just want to give a friendly reminder that uh, you have until uh, October 31st to get those property taxes in without receiving a penalty. And uh, I can tell you in all the years that I've been involved in county government, uh, year after year, there's always a few p individuals who are just one day late, and they, uh, the treasurer has no leeway in, in, um, in making any kind of exception. So if you are one day late, you are going to receive a, a significant penalty. I remember one time, there was, it was, the penalty was, the penalty was $40,000. So uh, uh, it happened to be Georgia Pacific. Didn't get their didn't get their taxes in on time, but but I just want to let the we it, saw what happened to them. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, just uh, a friendly reminder to get those taxes in if you haven't already. Thank you very much. All right. Seeing no other business or announcements, the meeting is adjourned. Thanks.